lot has changed beneath the surface of Lake Huron in the past five years. Thanks to invasive zebra and quagga mussels and Chinook salmon that ate themselves out of house and home, Lake Huron's food web is missing some major pieces. Many of the small shrimp-like creatures are simply gone, and so are a lot of the critters they fed. The remaining predators are out there searching for steady food sources, and the prey species are trying to hang on while some sort of balance is struck. One potential beneficiary of all that change is the native lake trout, the Upper Great Lakes' original deep water predator that was extirpated from Lake Huron in the 1940s by overfishing and sea lampreys. From 1973 until 2002, more than 42 million lake trout were stocked in Lake Huron by state and federal agencies. And since 1976, the Michigan Department of Natural Resources has been studying lake trout abundance and distribution in an effort to help the species recover. Every year, staffers at the DNR's Alpena Fisheries Research Station head out to conduct a series of gill netting surveys across Lake Huron. Nets of varying mesh sizes are laid out over a mile and a half to catch anything swimming by, and then the fisheries team heads back out the next day to pull up the nets and collect the fish. They catch a few bottom dwellers, such as suckers and burbot, and they also catch some whitefish like this menominee. But when the lake trout come aboard, that's when the work begins. Once the nets are pulled and the fish collected, they are counted, weighed, and measured. But that's just the start. Each lake trout is opened up so biologists can determine their health and sex, and three chunks of muscle are collected from each fish for an energy analysis. Stomachs are emptied and their contents are recorded. One Gobi, one UFR. Clipped fins tell which year a fish was stocked, and scientists remove each fish's otoliths, small ear bones about the size of a grain of rice that tell a fish's exact age. The research shows a mix of good news and bad. Lamprey treatments have knocked those aquatic parasites back, which has helped lake trout tremendously. And lake trout are reproducing more now that alewives are gone, because alewives were full of an enzyme that caused lake trout to have fertility problems. This is a natural fish. There's no fin clips. You see, if you compare the pairs, they're exactly the same, exactly the same length and everything, and it has the AD uh, fin also, so that's a natural fish. Sex Female, mature, very mature. Yeah. But lake trout aren't out of the woods yet. Young lake trout aren't growing very fast because there isn't much for them to eat, and the food that is there is right at the bottom where the water is so cold it inhibits growth. Compounding those problems is the possibility that bigger lake trout are cannibalizing smaller lake trout. Now Michigan is looking to fill the empty niche left by alewives with lake herring a native species that also struggled when alewives took over the lake. That could give lake trout more to eat, but Michigan scientists say a huge number of lake trout are lost to Canadian commercial fishing nets that are actually targeting whitefish. At this point, biologists give the lake trout's recovery a 50-50 chance, which might not sound like much, but if lake herring restoration works and the Canadian gill nets can be curbed, that number could rise significantly. And remember that 50 years ago, that chance was pretty much zero.